Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I think if you are holding any XRP, you're going to really like this video. I have some new corridors to share with you. But first, this is the San Fran tribe. They are a great source for information coming out of the Silicon Valley. And they wrote today that Coinbase, Kraken, Hyobi, and Circle are heading here to Osaka, Japan to meet with the world leaders at the G20 summit. Now they have their own summit that they put together at the very last moment and it's called the V20 Crypto Meetup. Word is on the street uh, is that these exchanges are not happy at all with the new standards and guidelines that have put, been put forth by the FATF. That's the Financial Action Task Force. And they have invited the leaders to attend their B20 summit, and they plan to scout them out as well in person, according to this article. So far, each country has agreed to send a representative to their v20 summit and it's interesting that binance is not attending but i am looking forward to seeing how the discussions shape up with their meeting and they're not the only ones that are disappointed and having trouble with these new guidelines do you know in south korea there are 200 some boutique crypto exchanges and they are now put on notice with these new guidelines so i am afraid that these are going to shake up a lot of businesses and should you want to see how the um, financial action task force assesses countries i'm going to put this link down in the description below you can actually use the left hand side here find the country that you live in or look at any other country for that matter and you can see the report and the score you see here where you see a a green square with a c this is actually a complaint and then if you see this m e you see lots of m e's this stands for major improvement needed so the f ATF is coming to Japan this fall to complete an on-site check. And the last one that they did like this was back in 2008, and Japan was given the worst possible score for KYC. It was because in those days, uh, just to open up uh, something, a bank account with a financial institution, you were able to use a PO box. So their KYC was very poor, and I can tell you that for sure from personal experience in 2003 i think i just wow they didn't they didn't uh they didn't check anything in regards to uh showing proof of my address it was really interesting all right so the point is i think japan has gone totally on the overcompensated side this is the financial service agency it falls underneath the ministry of finance because they are now creating so many hoops to jump through that's one of the reasons why binance left japan and went over to malta because he just didn't want to jump through it in one of those hoops they have a 400 questions on the application process to open up a new exchange here in this country so you can see that they have gone in just 10 years from one side of the spectrum to the other all right and then this is also the fsa today sent out a warning to this site this site is in english and in Japanese. But the site, if we take a look at the English website and see where they are, they are located in the Republic of the Seychelles. So it's way out of the FSA's jurisdiction. So I think it's kind of strange that they would even send them a warning, but they said that you cannot do business with Japanese residents or citizens because you're not licensed by us, the FSA. But it's a, it's a totally different country. So I don't know. I don't know how they're going to handle this in the future. If they can't regulate somebody who's in the Republic of the Seychelles, then maybe they're going to go after the residents of Japan or the citizens of Japan who are using these unlicensed unregulated sites 
I'm not sure. But anyway, again, it'll be uh, interesting to see how they handle this. And then here is really what I want to share with you. This is kind of exciting. This is new. I don't think you've seen it because it just came out of the Ripple Camp in June 2019. You can see the date up here. And I actually think it's just two days old. So what we have here is their new focus. And this is the small to medium size enterprise, very often called the SMEs. This is so interesting. You're going to find that the SMEs are what 60% of them are employment and the 40% comes from national income. This is a 10 slide presentation and it is showing how the B2B payments in this market exceeds 125 trillion. And when you just carve out the cross border payments of that market, it's 10 to 15 trillion. And the revenue is expected to surge some 9% by 2022. So when I just take you down here, you'll see whoever's working on these Presentations now has a really good eye for color. I just love this. I think it's so beautiful. Here we have some of the big opportunities. The opportunity is really lying within the emerging markets. They are seeing a two times growth and particularly is the South uh, Asia Pacific region and Eastern Europe. So you can see that 50% are from accounts payable and 50% of them of the money is from the marketplace payouts. And the ones that really stand out here is Brazil has eight to 12 billion. Then you can see India has a 10 to 15 billion market and Turkey has a 10 to 15 billion market. But it gets just really interesting. You can see the growth is just off the charts. It is the Asia Pacific region in this red orange that you see here is just the unbelievable uh, opportunity for Ripple to grow its business. These SME B2B cross-border markets lack financial services and the fees are high and the services are few so there are too many intermediaries which create a very slow process for them to move their money. They need a new payment system solution something that's high speed, low cost, has visibility and traceability, and everybody knows that's what RippleNet and XRP provide. 71% of the SMEs feel cross-border payments are problematic. Anyway, I am going to really have fun sharing this with you because you're gonna see that the new uh, channels that are open here. Let me see if I can see. So, okay, there's no direct payment rail for blockchain, too many intermediaries, and they can bypass all that using the RippleNet. So, okay, what we are looking at here is blockchain versus the correspondent banking. For a lot of people, you have seen this kind of schematic. For people who are new in the space, the Correspondent banking requires the money to move through multiple uh, partners, you know, correspondent banking partners. So if you're sending money from, let's see, the US, it goes to bank B, to bank C, and then finally to bank D and its final destination. But with blockchain and using RippleNet, you get, you get this incredibly efficient, fast, uh, very frictionless, Pale, a, a payment rail by going direct. And then when we come down here, you're going to see about InstaRem and BTEC. We know that they are Ripple partners and they have formed a bridge across the Atlantic Ocean. And the new corridors are Brazil to Spain, also Brazil to Italy, Brazil to Germany, Brazil to France, and Brazil to Portugal. And you can see here at the bottom, I know it's a little bit small, but I'll put a link down in the description below. You can inspect it for yourself. They talk about banks and payment providers can use the digital asset XRP to further reduce their cost and access 
to new markets. Anyway, I think it's very exciting that this is a new focus for them because it opens up a whole new market. All right, this is an article that kind of hit the headlines in the last 24 hours, and it was written by this gentleman by the name of Billy Bram Bambrow, and he decided that uh, he would choose the headline, Ripple's CEO just made a sudden turnaround on Bitcoin. And it kind of makes people who just are not very well versed in this space think that the CEO of Ripple is now finding Bitcoin more attractive than XRP. And it's like this turnaround. It's, it's, it's crazy. And I want to explain why. But first, I went to just see who is this person who's writing this kind of story. And he says that, you know, because Forbes is really famous for letting a lot of freelance writers seemingly write anything they want, and nobody checks their work. And this is another example. So he says he's a journalist with significant experiencing experience covering technology, finance, and economics uh, and business around the world. And that's about all I need to read. Okay. Okay. Well, if you are paying attention to this space and like you have claimed, you would have seen that this is something that was written, wow, was this back in August? This was back in August of last year. This is August of 2018, where there was an article that Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse talks XRP and is long on Bitcoin. And I can take you even back to February 2017, and you can hear for yourself Back in 2017, he has always said that he is long on Bitcoin. But there's a lot of passion around all digital assets. That's true of XRP. That's true of Bitcoin for sure. I actually am long Bitcoin personally. I'm actually long Bitcoin personally. So, you know, the fact that you write a article that he's made this dramatic turnaround is just so incorrect, so wrong, and so careless of your uh, journalistic work. Okay, I got to stop there. You know, it was when I was uh, researching, looking for this particular video that I was listening to Jungle Inc. And it hit him too, the same way it hit me because he talked about it on his video today. And I just... Uh, yeah, I just, I just, I guess maybe, okay, people make mistakes. Absolutely. And so, but what I really feel is that the, um, the onus on the media should really be in the hands of Forbes. Somebody should be checking these stories before they just let anything get put on paper and published. It's just very, uh, irresponsible of Forbes as well. Okay. I am jumping to the fluff, everybody. So look at this. This is super fun. These are seven women from Osaka, Japan, and they have put together uh, a group to welcome the G20 leaders. And, you know, believe it or not, do you know that they're going to close 700 schools during this summit? Uh, it's just unbelievable that the people are also being urged to stay away from the city center. I think the people coming are going to think like, what is this ghost town? <laughs> because there's going to be nobody on the streets. It's, I'm sure, a security nightmare for those police and uh, special uh, security detail officers. But anyway, the group is uh, a rap group from Osaka. The average age is 66 and they call their song Oba Funk. And I want to explain to you what Oba means. Oba means like old biddy or old hag or uh, that old, that old, that, that, that old woman over there. It's, it's, it's very much kind of uh, a derogatory, but in 
uh, a way, well, you would never use it because uh, and, unless you used it in a funny way. And that's the point is people in Osaka are known for their amazing sense of humor. It's where most of the comedians come out of. And it's said that when you are in school, it has uh, more weight on being funny than it does on what your grades are. So I think that the kids compete very much to be the funniest uh, kid in class. Now, this is a uh, typical Obachan or Obasan, which is a more polite way to call these women who are older. This is very typical Osaka. The women there are known to wear these animal prints and have this mismatched crazy colors all the time. And I, I think when you do go to Osaka, yeah, you do sometimes see it once in a while, but I think you see this all over the world with some people who are older in their age, maybe, I don't know. But Osaka is famous for them. And so they are really playing up on their stereotype. The food, by the way, is amazing in Osaka. It has a better reputation than even Tokyo. The people are very friendly and very outgoing, and it's just very different than Tokyo. I want to just now just show you their uh, brand new video. We will just take a, just a quick peek. I can't watch it all. It's so funny. I will put the link in the description below. I think if you're in for a big smile, this is something you might enjoy. Okay, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye bye.